Welcome. This is Jean Eaton, your practice management mentor with Information Managers. I'm delighted that you've joined us today for our interview with Carol Bush. Carol is going to be talking about healthcare content and social media. This is a weekly interview series with practice managers, healthcare providers, or trusted vendors who support healthcare practices. Many of you know that my career started as a receptionist and a transcriptionist in a busy family medical walk-in practice before I moved into health records and health information management and hospital administration. Now I specialize by consulting practice to independent healthcare practices who want to start, grow, or fix their practice administration so that healthcare practices can focus on providing quality healthcare services. Today, my guest is Carol Bush, the social nurse. Carol has a variety of background information that we just heard about in our show before the show. Her first degree was in journalism, but Carol Bush is now a writer and a content strategist. Her second degree or multiple degrees in nursing, and she is the founder of The Social Nurse, a consultancy helping healthcare small businesses and nurse entrepreneurs tell stories that matter to the people that they need to reach. She is a contributing writer for allnurses.com and an editorial advisor for Oncology Nursing News. Carol is also the co-founder of the brand new Healthcare Marketing Network. Thank you, Carol, for joining us on Practice Management Nuggets. Well, Jean, thanks so much. I have to tell you I'm so, so excited to be here and, uh, you know, hear from your tribe that also share some things. I have to say that two of uh, my very favorite jobs of all time actually were working with independent practices. So, um, you know, obviously big background in oncology. Uh, so I was a practice lead with a, um, a rural oncology practice. And one of my very favorite jobs was working as a float nurse for a multi-specialty clinic. And of course, that means I like variety, obviously, but I'm so excited to be here and ready to dive in when you are. Excellent. Thank you, Carol. Um, we met through a mutual friend, Janet Kennedy of, of Get Social Health, and I've been following the development of the new Healthcare Writers Network, and I want to congratulate you and Janet for co-founding this initiative. Well, thanks. We've had a blast, I have to tell you. It's been fun. <laughs> tell me how you made the transition from nursing and oncology nursing to the world of social media for healthcare? Well, it's been um, a blast. And actually, um, it relates a little bit to the fact that nursing is actually my second degree. And I mentioned a little bit at the beginning of the show that my first degree is in journalism. And um, I do live in Kansas, and it's predominantly rural state. So about the time I graduated from college and, you know, got married, moved to the middle of rural Kansas, that journalism degree didn't, there weren't a lot of opportunities available. So what I did was I um, shortly went back to school. Um, the opportunities around me were in healthcare, and I chose to become a nurse, and that was the best decision I ever made. Um, because I like to write, I've always found myself in those places writing policies and procedures or helping with the newsletter or maybe, you know, tweaking the educational material. But where it really became cool was um, as um, my young adult children got involved in social media, they just said, hey, mom, if you're on Facebook, then, um, you know, if you join, you'll get to know it. But what I found was by joining Facebook, I connected with all those young adult children who were seeking health care information from their social network first before their physicians. So that told me I needed to figure um, social media and digital tools out quickly because it was going to disrupt my practice. I joined the Mayo Clinic Social Media Network got connected with my colleague Janet, who is um, a long-term marketer and has a, um, a podcast, Get Social Health. 
Um, and we just started working together about a year ago, uh, working and providing blog coaching and content and webinars, got connected with a whole bunch of writers across the country, and ha now have launched an online community. That was really a, a big story <laughs> in a short period of time. <laughs> well, it, it's interesting how we've moved from one place to the other, but we can bring our passions with us across those multiple interests. Exactly. So social media in healthcare, you mentioned that patients are going to social media first to look up information uh, for their healthcare. And what we're finding, of course, is that um, we're having patients looking up Dr. Google uh, before they go to see the doctor. So instead of having patients access uh, looking up Dr. Google, it would be so much better if those patients had access to the right information for them just in time that was meaningful, accurate, and reinforces the key education principles that we want to be able to share with them. Exactly right, because that, you know, what we're all about is we are, um, you know, family physicians and family nurse practitioners. Um, our, our, and in my specialty, oncology, nurses, physicians, social workers, we become part of the family and we are well trusted. So people like to do business with those they know and trust. So, you know, why not use the tools available to us, our family of healthcare providers, using digital tools to provide real-time information, just like you said, that's unique for our families and patients. So let's be our own subject matter experts. That's what we are. Okay, be our own subject matter experts. That it sounds like a great process. Um, so it's, it's one of those things that I see in my experience working with healthcare practices. So I talk about the pink elephant in the room. And, and every practice has a pink elephant in your organization that just never quite gets fixed. You create workarounds or you'll get to it someday. And today is that someday. We have a lot of information that we want to share with our patients, but we don't always know how to share it that information with them after they leave the examination room. I think the elephant in the room in this case is that we need to use social media because that's where many of our patients are and we can share that information with them in a way that they first want, in a way that's going to help them uh, meet their, their healthcare objectives. And while not every patient's on social media, if you can provide and meet a need for that population that is on social media in a way that is efficient and effective, then it frees up some time to be able to deal with patients who are not on social media in the more traditional and labor-intensive ways. Exactly, and I think you really hit the nail on the head that we need to, it's a great focus and an opportunity to meet patients and families where they are, because quite simple, um, that problem is, we can't meet or adequately prepare all patients in a 15-minute office visit. So it's up to us to really look at all of the tools at our disposal. How can we take the content that we're already creating, which we are creating content every time we have a conversation with a patient. How can we create that on a quick video, on YouTube, or in a blog, et cetera? So those are great ways that you can address that elephant in the room. Okay. Carol, I ask all of my guests to be able to share with us their number one tip. So I'm going to ask you, Carol, what is your number one tip for healthcare providers and practice managers about providing healthcare content to your patients? Start blogging, keep blogging, and be yourself. Tell your authentic, true story. That is a great place to get started. Let's go back and just define exactly what is what is a blog? What are we talking about when we're talking about blogging? Well, definitely um, a blog is actually um, a word that comes from web blog. It's really a website where a writer, an individual writer, or sometimes you see a group of writers um, express themselves in a, it can be a short blog post from personal perspective, 
or it can be longer informational content that might be going through a process or procedure and has visuals attached to it. So basically, that's what we're talking about when we talk about a blog. And in a healthcare practice, we often find that, obviously, based on our website as a separate page on the website. Okay. So a blog is often on a website. Um, it can sometimes be on a special kind of a, um, almost kind of like a newsletter that you don't own. You own a little bit, a piece yes. of that newsletter, a column. Mm -hmm. but, but if you have a business, you want it to be on your website because you want to be able to share that content with people who want to know about your practice and about your business. Correct. And because your website is your online home, that's, that's um, your own property. Um, so definitely you want people, your patients are accessing your portal, they're setting appointments, they're looking at, you know, who do I need to talk to about a billing or et cetera. Uh, so it's a perfect place because your website is your business home and that is where your blog should ideally rest. But there are other options as you related to newsletters, et cetera. Right. So it's important from a business perspective to make sure that you um, build your content and build your business on, on property that you own, which is your website domain. And from a business perspective, you want your content to appear first on your website. And then you might take bits and pieces or, or lots of it and repost it onto Facebook or LinkedIn. But you want to start it on your website first because that's the, that's the real estate that you can manage. Exactly. So we're not going to get into a whole lot of technical details today about how to do blogging, but why should a practice blog anyway? What gives, what's the advantage to them to, to create a blog? Well, like I identified um, earlier, the office visit is really not um, a place where we're adequately adequately preparing patients and families. Uh, we provide education. Um, we want to look at providing that in, in a way people are prepared to listen in meaningful ways. It's important to create those sound bites. So you think about the, maybe the handouts that you already have. Those are sound bites as well. Well, can you turn something like that into a story in a blog? We want to look at multiple innovative ways to repurpose or deliver that not only in person, one-on-one, -on -one, but on the blog, on your own website, or maybe you have a tutorial in a video, et cetera. There are multiple ways families, uh, again, we want to reach them where they are and where are they? They are online. Actually, where they are is on their smartphone. Think about that's where we look up information on the Internet now. So that's where we want to reach patients. Right. Um, and when we're talking with our patients one-on-one -on -one in our practices, it's a one-to-one -one relationship, and you're providing good advice and, and, and education. But if you have that information on your blog or in other ways, you can be sharing that information to many people. So it becomes... Um, certainly more effective, and you get that message out to a broader audience of the people that we want to serve. Mm -hmm. And it's really great. I've seen uh, really great effective ways to do this, whether you are internal medicine practice that possibly, you know, a run of flu or certain illnesses coming through, or maybe there's a public health um, inf uh, issue in your area. Instead of having those multiple calls, uh, maybe you're still getting those multiple calls, but you can write one blog to address the issue. And then it's an easy way to refer people that you're meeting in practice about that issue or maybe your nurses or other teams said, hey, for more information, check out the blog. So it's a nice way to reinforce and deliver that advice and education. The things you're doing one-on-one, -on -one, but you can also tweak them um, on your blog or uh, via social as well. Okay. So there are a lot of advantages about really putting some energy into blogging. Um, blogging doesn't have to take, you know, it's not necessarily a full-time job, although for some of us it is. Why should people get serious about blogging? There are many other advantages for the, for the business as well. 
Exactly. And actually, I think this period it gets pretty exciting because I think first we think about sharing information to patients and families, but here are some other elements and reasons to get um, serious that are equally or maybe even more important with your goals for your business. It's a great business strategy because the blogging allows you to showcase your expertise and build an online reputation as, you know, hey, the go-to practice in your community about information that's going on or illness or event. Um, again, relating right back to your website is your home base. That is your own publishing hub. So you create ownership of that unique content that's specific to your patients in your community. It allows you to build an audience because it's really fun. If you have diverse voices because you have multiple disciplines within your practice or your own referral partners, it's really a neat opportunity. People are going to start following you. Over time, they do. So it's a great way to promote yourself and your practice or company. For business development, think about generating new leads. Okay, what's a new lead for a practice? The new people who are moving into your community or the new parents or the new moms. These are great opportunities to bring in, when you're telling those stories that relate to people, bringing in new clients for your practice. Um, it's also an opportunity for revenue generation, uh, although I don't know that I can say that I have someone in my mind that's done as um, great a job at this as maybe they could, I do think there's a lot of opportunity for advertising and sponsorship, nonprofit opportunities. If you have an advocacy event, an outreach event, it's a great way to generate sponsorships that way. I've seen some really good work um, in that realm. It's also when you're writing a blog or contributing to a blog on your own website, Think about, um, as you are sharing this information, hey, guess what? The local news station needs uh, factual information or background on an, on an illness that's going around. Hey, they can go right to your website, and that is going to lead to, believe it or not, media and guest posting opportunities. Um, number two, I referred to the referral partners that you have. You don't have to write all of the content yourself. What about the breast surgeon down the road that you refer to? Well, that's a great opportunity to solidify that referral relationship, elevate their thought leadership, and have people get to know them as well. So definitely, you know, just a couple key things. You can become a thought leader by blogging, and it will bring you opportunities for speaking or presentation, maybe for your association. And above all, blogging actually I like to say blogging builds integrity. Going back to people want to do business with those they like, know, and trust. And blogging, telling your unique story, is a great way to build trust. Okay. Telling your unique story is a great way to build trust. That's a good sound bite, Carol. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So we've got lots of good reasons for, for doing blogging, and the doing of the blogging doesn't have to take a lot of time. If you like to spend some time in front of the keyboard, you could do it that way, but you can also dictate that information and, and have it transcribed or use drag and dictation or you know a variety of other ways. So there's lots of tools out there, but once you've created that content, once you've put those words on you know on a piece of paper, so to speak, you can repurpose it in lots of different ways as well. And, you know, I think this is, relates to some of the pre-webinar uh, conversation that we were having. I never dreamt in my life, uh, you know, obviously my first career is in journalism, and then as a nurse, I never dreamt that I would be learning how to edit video, that I would be learning how to, um, you know, post things on Vimeo and YouTube. And um, I'm not a podcaster, but, you know, gosh, look at Jean. I bet you never dreamt you were going to be a podcaster either. You know, the thing that's really cool is there are so many free and affordable apps that make it 
so easy. I mean, I like to say, you know, you can um, even like editing video. If I can do it, anyone can do it. So it's almost like all of these things for dummies, you know. Not that anyone out there is a dummy, but that's what I would consider. Oh, I always have to say that. But there are many, many apps that are available to help you repurpose your content. Maybe it's in writing now, but you can do a quick video. Think about what's the thing we have in our hand all the time? That phone. That phone is more powerful than com than the computer. I learned how to do that You know, crazy computing language on in the early 80s in college. I mean, I think it took up a whole room. <laughs> and the tools are they are getting easier and easier every day. If blogging is for you um, or maybe somebody that you're working with on your team and you don't know how to do it, don't worry so much about that. The, the technology is, is not a hard piece to, to get across, and there's lots of resources and tools that can help you to do that. Um, so we want to talk about, you know, well, you know, maybe blogging is a good thing, but, you know, who would want to listen to me? What do I, what do I have to say that somebody else wants to hear? Well, there's a lot of ideas for your blog. Oh, my gosh. It's, the ideas, I think, are never ending in healthcare, in medical practice. Um, one of the things I really like to challenge when I'm working with medical teams because they say, oh, I'm going to have to sit down and think of something to write. I loved your idea, Jean, a little bit ago when you said, hey, just dictate. Everyone's already dictating their transcription. So go ahead and think about, okay, what were the most common questions did you have during the day? While you're in your team huddle, I challenge the whole team to come up with three topics or three questions. And remember, it doesn't have to relate to illness or even wellness. It can relate to you're adding um, on. You purchased a new piece of equipment. Your social worker is, uh, you know, got an award at the um, local conference. Uh, your physician, lead physician, was part of a quality improvement project, or even writing about our quality improvement project. Or again, do you wear jeans every Friday and contribute that money to a local nonprofit? What about your favorite recipes? I have a client a billing and coding company, that they actually put out um, their favorite family recipes for in November. And that blog post was one of the highest uh, read and shared blog posts on social media and even on Pinterest. So who would think of a billing and coding blog doing well on Pinterest? But those are some of the things that you can think about writing or those are ideas for your blog but go ahead and crowdsource them within your team and even patients as well too true it, it, it's amazing that once you start thinking about all of those questions that you get from your patients you know so your blog doesn't have to be super technical it doesn't have to be you know a spot-on com comedy product it doesn't have to be you know the the most um interesting images that go with it it just needs to be some information that you want to share because people want to know about it. And mm -hmm. people ask you questions all day, so you've got so many pieces to be able to share. I love the idea about sharing your, you know, your team members' favorite recipes. It's a way to be able to tell more about who you are as a person. And those are the type of content that people like to be able to, to, to know about. Exactly. They do. That's yeah. Enough. <laughs> but there are lots of different people on your team, and they all have different um, strengths, and we can use those strengths to be able to help us with the blog. Exactly. You never know who your wordsmiths are. Not at all. You'll be surprised when you ask your team who likes to write, who maybe used to write in high school. Maybe they were on the, you know, the yearbook. Uh, committee or journalism committee, you'll be very, very surprised. Maybe within your team, you have a mom who already has a blog and you don't even know it. You'll be surprised. Trust me. That's interesting. So your challenge would be to find wordsmiths on your team. Exactly. And I think um, I love this 
a slide because it really comes from there's a, a, a marketing resource that I uh, like to track, uh, Marketing Trends called Marketo Trends 2017. And in this, it was really cool. It spoke really highly to me because it talked about you know the need that we are all producing content. And they even related that in healthcare, we are becoming publishing companies because we are sharing health-related information, tutorials, et cetera, in so many different ways. And they said that to be successful in this environment, the folks who are most successful involve on their team thinkers, dealers, and doers. So the thinkers are, of course, tech-savvy, and they're visionary. And the feelers are the natural storytellers, the people who say, oh, you know, so-and-so, this is a great story, or oh, did you hear about this? But you also need the doers, and those folks execute, they know how to execute, they're organized, and they can execute a service and design. And when I saw this, I was just like, oh my gosh, well, no wonder everyone, um, you know, healthcare content, healthcare social media, why is there such great power is because, you know, voila, healthcare professionals, we're feeling factual doers. We are in touch with patients, families, and caregivers, and that's why this is such a powerful opportunity for your practice or you as an individual if you want to develop um, thought leadership and thought leadership and uh, and be known online. So those are some really interesting points that healthcare providers, you know, we're the subject matter experts and the content experts, and we're surrounded by team members who can help us to develop that that content to become our own little publishing co companies. So we've got lots of people that could potentially be part of that team. We just have to ask the question. Exactly. And as I related, you will be surprised, I guarantee you. You may even have people on your team who have always wanted to write a book or may have already written a book because, again, all of the tools that are available out there, it's very easy for us to build our own website for free, to start our own individual blog, and it might be because it's a blog where my hobby is refurbishing furniture, but if there's someone on your team who is already doing that, guess what? They've built a website. They know how to format the blog post. They've used plugins and are promoting their um, work via social media. You already have um, the folks. I don't want you to just limit yourself to your nurses and physicians. Yes, they are great subject matter experts, but what about the rest of the team? Think about all of the disciplines. Physical therapists, dietitians, counselors, um, customer service team, billers, coders, I mean, you name it, of pastoral uh, folks. Don't forget about your referral partners, the other specialties that you work with, maybe your public health cooperative um, in the region as well. And number one, what about patients, families, and caregivers? And I have to tell you that. A, some people are like, whoa, why do I want to involve, what is, should I have patients write on my practice blog? I'm like, oh, heck yeah. They have the best stories, and your patients already love you. So what is better about a champion patient, family, or caregiver, you know, their um, referral or, or um, you know, just that feel-good story about you and your practice, having that on your blog, oh, my gosh, that's worth a lot. Very interesting point. Um, that would have been, would not have been part of my go-to solution, but um, it is now. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> well, I think maybe because I come from oncology and I have so many, um, a lot of oncology patients have their own blog, and they're very astute and clinically savvy. And, um, you know, it's easy to identify the champions the folks who, you know, aren't going to bash you. Um, and definitely that doesn't mean you just have people post willy-nilly, your internal team nor um, guest posters. Um, there is a process. But I say, I say be open and transparent and invite patients to post as well. Great point. Thank you. 
So we have um, a number of things that we've talked about in this short time. So we've talked about the subject matter expert, and that's the, the healthcare practice and, and all those people that's involved with it. We've identified the ideas for content for your blog and even team members to help you to continue, continue to generate the content. Um, how do we get from the idea stage to producing healthcare content to attract patients and improve patient satisfaction? Ah, well, that's the, what, $3 million question or $29 question, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you have a solution for that, Carol. How can you help us? I, <laughs> I do. And actually, um, you know, our mission, my mission is really probably much like all of you out there. I want to see the quality of healthcare information on the internet, you know, just really ramp up. So definitely I'm committed to that. So what we did was we created um, a, a online community. It's actually a global collective. It's called the Healthcare Marketing Network. It's a global collective of freelance writers and communications creatives. So that means not just writers, but bloggers, vloggers because there are people who use video logs instead of a blog, which is more the written on the internet, um, as well as ghostwriters, et cetera. But these folks are from multiple clinical disciplines, um, nurses, physicians, social workers, pharmacists, and they are also from across the globe. They're people we just networked with regularly, but we provided um, a platform uh, for training, support, mentoring, uh, and connecting to paying gigs. So it's a great uh, opportunity for um, folks who are already established freelancers to ramp up their game and help mentor other people and provide training to others. But it's also an opportunity for internal communications teams, so for example, in healthcare practices, to be part of a community where they can take some courses, you know, get ramped up in effective practices related to content creation for healthcare and social media for healthcare. Okay. So this network offers uh, training so that if we've identified a wordsmith or a content uh, subject matter expert in, in our healthcare practice, and they're interested in the idea but aren't sure how to get it um, to a point where they want to publish or need some support and some confidence building to make sure that they do have their, that point to get, to get it published, they can go to the Healthcare Marketing Network to get that support. And they can connect, again, their internal team to best practices and training and content creation, or um, they can, if they don't have a wordsmith on their team um, and they need an individual project like an individual blog or they want to add an, a missing subject matter expert to their already existing uh, great folks internally, they can connect with individual freelancers like maybe a social worker, a pharmacist, et cetera. Um, or if they full on don't um, have an internal team and they want to outsource comprehensive content strategy um, with someone like myself and full-on blog management, uh, we have that available. Those solutions are available as well. Okay. So it might be something that um, I really know that I would love to have more patient education materials on this topic, but I just don't have the time or the energy or perhaps even the interest to, to do it myself. I can contact the Healthcare Marketing Network and um, connect with those people that have experience in healthcare, who are writers, who can provide the content that I need to put onto my blog to be able to share with my patients. Exactly. So we've got lots of options here. The Healthcare Marketing Network helps you with you, your done-for-you solution. And if you are a wordsmith or a subject matter expert who needs some support, some help, you need some, some to fill in some of the blanks in your skills, you can take the membership with the Healthcare Marketing Network and get the support, the, the training and the support from the community to be able to fill in the gaps so that you can get your blog off and running. 
you have your wordsmiths are writing that blog and you just need another once over or you need someone to full on edit, um, there are editors available. Those are all resources that would make a lot of sense and solve some of those maybe pain points for busy healthcare practice. So I want to invite our audience to uh, enter the questions for Carol in the chat button or the Q&A box. And while you're getting your keyboards warmed up so that you can do that, Carol, you've offered the audience a gift. Um, tell us about your ebook. Yes. So um, I said earlier in uh, the webcast, and I don't know, I think I come from a long line of naturally we connect with people. I love connecting and learning, you know, what's the cool thing about this person, um, and then brokering relationships. So I really love using LinkedIn to not only develop a professional learning network with other healthcare professionals, uh, but also, um, you know, LinkedIn has a publishing tool, so I can publish um, my own blog uh, topics and establish myself as a thought leader. So what I did was um, I actually had uh, a lot of colleagues in Oncology Nursing Society kept asking me for, hey, I don't know anything about LinkedIn. Can you get me started or give me some tips? So I put together an ebook that's just 10 tips to make your LinkedIn profile rock in 2017, and it goes through this nice little checklist of uh, some great things that you need to uh, have in place. And then um, also at the end of the um, ebook, there is an offer that if you want some help or support, I'm available to do that, and um, it includes not only um, time evaluating or taking a look at your LinkedIn profile or maybe, you know, your whole team needs that help. Um, there's access to an online course that is just for LinkedIn for healthcare professionals that actually my uh, business partner, Janet Kennedy, developed. And um, in addition, I have um, a, a publishing uh, toolkit that I've put together too, so that includes that. But definitely the ebook is free uh, with those great, um, I think, practical uh, 10 tips to make sure that your LinkedIn profile is going to rock it this year. Excellent. Thank you for that. Uh, LinkedIn is a great place to be if you're a healthcare professional and to be able to network with other colleagues and maybe looking at uh, other opportunities down the road. But all that work that you do and putting in your LinkedIn profile properly, you can use that for your website and your blog too. Exactly. <laughs> in, in fact, for freelance writers, that is what I recommend. Uh, a lot of them want to, when they're first transitioning, say they're a nurse or a pharmacist, and they say, hey, I want to start uh, doing some freelance writing um, because, you know what, it's a really good PRN job. Don't work a 12-hour shift. Write for two hours, and you can... Trust me, you can make as much money or more than you do working a 12-hour shift, uh, definitely more. So uh, that's actually the first thing I say is don't invest in a website yet. Just fill out a really awesome LinkedIn profile and start publishing on there. That's a great way to build your, um, you know, your first pieces as a freelancer. That's a, that's a great tip. Um, so, yeah, using LinkedIn as, as a way to be able to test the waters is, is a good way to get started. All right, Carol, you've given us lots of information today about why we should have a blog, how we can generate some ideas to put content into our blog, and you've given us some suggestions about how we can develop our team to be able to identify our, our team members, our wordsmiths, and be able to develop and support those team members so that they can contribute to the blog and get it from a great idea to getting it done. Now, Healthcare Marketing Network has a variety of different resources that can help you through those steps. And Carol, what is the best way for somebody to reach you to find out more information about the Healthcare Marketing Network? Well, I'm all over social media, so you can uh, find me on LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, I'm at, if, you're, if you tweet, I love tweeting 
healthcare conferences, so please, if you're somewhere and have a clinical pearl, mention me either at the social nurse or at C. Bush RN, or definitely I answer my own email too. So uh, you you just pick the channel because I'm going to respond uh, one way or the other. And actually even old, fat, old school phones. <laughs> Uh, so you can get that on the Healthcare Marketing Network site or, again, on my LinkedIn profile. It has all multiple ways that you can contact me. Okay. So it's easy to reach Carol Bush, the social nurse, and I want to be able to uh, thank Carol for sharing this information. And I really want to encourage the audience to be able to take that step into doing some blogging. It doesn't take a lot of effort, probably a lot less effort than you think it does. And the biggest step is just to get started. So take that big step. Be prepared to get started and share that information with the patients so that you can uh, better meet their needs and to be, make your practice a little bit more efficient and effective as well. Carol, thank you very much for joining us today. You bet, Jean. Thank you so much. And again, I hope if anyone has questions, um, I am more than happy to try to answer or help in any way. And I, again, thank you so much. It was a blast. Thank you. I love surrounding myself with practice managers and healthcare providers who want to start, grow, and improve their practices. And I want to help you with more great tips, tools, templates, and training that you can use right away. Members of Practice Management Nuggets will receive a link after our webinar today with the implementation tips that Carol has shared with us and the link to the free ebook and help you to implement uh, your blog in your healthcare practice. I search for guest experts who will share their number one tip with you. Let me know if there's a topic or a guest expert that you want to hear on Practice Management Nuggets webinars for your healthcare practice. This is Jean Eaton, your practice management mentor, thanking you for joining us today. 